All right, I got this really cute set of opaque watercolors. Really is a kid's watercolor box. It is uh, from Germany, made in Germany. And I was really intrigued by it. I know this is a, like a kid's school type watercolor box. Um, oh. Name tag to put on your watercolor box. <laughs> That's cute. But it was a big set. It has 24 colors and they're pretty big like tiles of watercolor. So I'm kind of excited to see how this works for playing with and you know, doing some, gotta be smarter than the watercolor tray, okay? Oh, comes apart. Okay, so here we go. These are the watercolors. I think you're supposed to be able to, yeah, you can. So I can, you can pick them up, take them out. It tell, oh, it tells you what color they are underneath. So this is yellow or wan or zeal. This is orange, orange or orange. Zinberot or vermilion. Yeah, so this is vermilion. I'm just gonna go with the English. This should probably be a magenta, yeah, magenta. I like that they're easy, that they come out easy. That's violet. And this is ultramarine blue. This is Chinese white. So this is black. Then we've got burnt sienna. I like that they're like real names. There's no pigment information, but I like that it's real names. Yellow ochre. Now, if I wanted to move them around, I could, but they wouldn't be where the names are anymore. So this is yellow green. This is blue green. So some of them don't have their, their names. So blue green would probably be like phthalo type green. This is cyan blue. Under the lip here. Come on. Oh, come on. I know you come out. No name. Oh, these aren't named. Well, I'd say this is a lemon yellow. This would be a yellow orange. Um, maybe a crimson. A Prussian blue. A phthalo blue. A Payne's gray. That would probably be your yellow oak. No, that's your yellow ochre. I think. Wasn't that yellow ochre? Yeah, that's yellow ochre. So that would be an umber, and that would be a burnt umber, and that would be the wan brilliant, probably, the that flesh tone, an olive green. I'm not sure what green, and then probably a turquoise. I am going to go ahead and spritz the whole thing. I like that you can take the colors out and you can, you know, separate them as you want. It does have little mixing wells, so you can mix the colors. Press, oh, press here. So you can, you can take the palette off. That's nice like a dab of each color. Ooh, maybe I should put black on here or a dark color. This isn't black. This is uh, just a dark chocolate brown, but it's good enough to be black, right? It's a really dark color. Yellow.
It's actually quite opaque for a yellow. We'll let them dry and then we'll, we'll work on them from there. Orange. It's kind of a burnt orange color. It's not going to be like the Holbein gouache, you know, when you dry the pans and, and such, but it is going to be fun and something that I would maybe, if they're fun to paint with, I might feel comfortable, you know, leaving this in the van, my camping van. Those are really pretty colors though. I think I'm going to put some, maybe we'll just do some color pebbles. I am going to first get that wet. We're going to see if these colors move. I'm going to take some of that blue, make sure that we get a, a wet puddle of it. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's cool. I was not expecting that. That. Whoa. Okay. So now let's grab some of this yellow. Yellow does not go whoosh. Well, it does. I guess it needed to be in a good puddle spot. Let the paint kind of do its own thing. Maybe drop a little bit more water on it. See if we can get some of that uh, kind of tie-dye look. Okay, I'm just going to let that go. I think I am going to do one. If I get it really wet, I am going to put this. Oh, love that. Oh my gosh, that is cool. I think I want to grab some of the purple maybe. And see if I can. Eh, the purple goes. Eh. No purple. Not a fan of the purple. Maybe the magenta.
Yeah, the blue makes a nice purple with this sort of magenta color. So I will probably mix my purple. Let's do that. Take some of that blue. And some of that magenta. Magenta. Ah, oh, there's that dark purple that I was looking for, that I really wanted. Okay, so put it on. You can actually work with this fairly transparently with enough water, but it is an opaque watercolor, but it's not gouache. And that's nice, you know, it's nice that it's not. So I'm gonna put away the palette, I don't need that. It's been a couple days and everything is completely dry and it looks lovely and vibrant. I'm really, really tickled with how this paint is working out. I'm just going to doodle these rocks. It's going to be a speed video. I just wanted to let you know what I'm using. I'm using a Uniball Signo RT1, it's a .28 black ink. It is waterproof or water resistant. I'm also going to use this Artix acrylic marker for my whites. Whatever I do white, I'm going to use this. See you when I get done. <laughs>
All right, friends. So what do I think about these watercolors? I think that they're a lot of fun and you can get bright, vibrant effects. You can also get softer effects. Doing the doodles like this made me really happy. I hope that you like that little trick, the amazing trick of just taking some white, a uh, white Posca pen, a white Artix marker, a white uh, brush with bleed proof white, anything, and it will make it look sparkly, make it look shiny, make it look dimensional. I love this. I hope that you enjoyed this. Click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends, and share this paint with your friends. Because if you've got somebody who wants to learn how to paint, I think this is a really good little set to get you started. Take care, guys. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.